Hello and welcome to another jungle video and an update to our ultimate early game jungling guide. We have made a few over the years but it's time to refresh things up for season 11. And if you're watching this next season, season 12 as well. But I'm sure there'll be jungle changes. There always are. So for this video we are going to talk about basically every little thing you need to consider for the first 12 to 15 minutes in the game. Matchups, champion choices, early routes, first clears, after your first clears, ganking, vision, counter jungling, objectives. But that's quite a lot of information in a short amount of time. And if I've covered some of the topics in depth, you know, with the information you really need, I will link all those videos in the description. This will just be a great outline, cover, and in-depth discussion of all the things you need to think about as a jungler. So as always, please consider leaving a like and subscribing if you enjoy the content, both this channel and the gameplay one. And if you're looking for a different level, maybe a bit more beginner, a bit more advanced, I will be setting up coaching classes on Planet 9 very soon. So make sure you join me there as well. And now without further hesitation, let's begin. Right, first up, you need to consider your champion pool, your class choices, and what you're actually going to play. You're going into champion select, making sure you have everything necessary that when the enemy team shows up, when you have first pick or last pick, you know exactly what you're going to choose, your runes are ready, and you're mentally prepared to destroy just like a T-800. Now, obviously, that was literally just a previous video release, so make sure you watch that so you understand what you're going to choose. But once you head into game, once you're in that loading screen, you must consider your matchup 1v1 with the enemy jungler as well as the lane matchups. Doing this will allow you to assess the win conditions and to actually understand what you need to accomplish in the game. For the enemy jungler as well as your team, consider scaling. Crowd control versus damage versus tankiness versus camouflage. Shaco is early camo, Evelyn's level 6, Rengar's level 6, Kha'Zix is level 6. Think about what you want to accomplish from level 1 to 3. What does the enemy want to accomplish from level 1 to 3? Are there notable level 6 ultimate spikes from the enemy jungler as well as yourself? Which lanes have the best CC and which one should you perhaps consider ganking? All of these considerations will lead you to outline and understand your win conditions. Now if at this point you're thinking, well how can I possibly know all of that just from champion select and loading screen? Well the video is a little old but I did do a full breakdown on how to research that and really it derives from your own experience. Playing the game more, playing different champions, having a good champion pool that you play into many matchups lets you learn these things very quickly and there's no substitute for experience or so the job market keeps telling us. As you know all entry level jobs require 15 years experience and 3 PhDs. Now those first two things are a little boring, yeah I get it, some people just want to skip it and jump into the game, but you must actually implement them into your thought process, because the third point here is considering your early jungle roots. Oh yes, we're finally into the game and the guy playing on a TI-83 plus finally has loaded in. What are your early jungle roots, your pathing, your goals in that first phase? It's not just for you, but you must consider always, where does the enemy jungle start and what do they want to do? Everyone knows at this point, but most don't do it. Please track where the enemy jungler starts. If they are getting a leash, that lane will be late to show. They might have mana missing if they use spells. I hope they use spells, otherwise it's a crappy leash. But things like Raptor starts, Lilia, Kane, even an Echo. Those exist. What about Fiddlesticks who can join together Raptors and Red, or even merge together the Wolves and the Blue for a start? Get those deep wards if you have an invade and think about it. If you are in the losing matchup, you know Elise is going to absolutely destroy me. I'm going to try to do a full clear. She's going to collapse and steal my blue. Maybe even she's just going to take my blue anyway. Sit tight at the beginning. Ward the pixel bush. Maybe leave a ward on your blue if you plan on doing a full bottom side clear. Head to your red buff. Begin what you need to do. And if you see the Elise walking around through the ward, now you can flex and go and steal her camps in kind. It would be more prudent if you were perhaps against a Javan, Kindred or Graves, maybe even a Nidalee. You leave that ward on your blue buff because if they plan on counter jungling you early and stealing that and cheesing it away, they can hop over either the Rift Herald Pit or the Dragon Pit just to ensure that your Pixel or Bush doesn't detect them. Therefore having a ward left at 1 minute on your blue lets you know while you're just doing your honest work on the bottom side that they are actively trying to take what is yours and so you will go and take what is theirs. Obviously at this point you must pay attention to lane prior. This is the same if you are going to invade. This is the same if you're going for early counter jungling or cheeses. If you don't have the lane prior and it's warded, don't be surprised to, you know, not exactly have a fun time when the whole enemy team collapses on you. And all of this comes down to one question. What do you want to accomplish with your early route? What do they want to accomplish? Do you want to gank very quickly, do a three buff into lane impact? Do you want to do an invade like we were just talking about? Maybe you just want to full clear quickly and try and get a double scuttle. This always works beautifully if you have, you know, say nice lane prior on the top and mid side, just like Canyon does whenever he plays solo queue or with down one. If you don't know what jungle routes you might like to do or what your champion best synergizes with, 
I have made a comprehensive Jungle Roots video with all you need to consider, as well as an additional one with Season 11 variants. Both are of course linked below as well. But just for example, junglers that would love to do a 3-5 camp into a gank, Sejuani, Lee Sin, at least in Rek'Sai definitely you want a 3 camp, either Red Side for Rek'Sai or Buff Buff Grump for Elise. Rek'Sai can do that as well, and go ahead and look to make impact. That can take the form of nice ganks early on, that can take the form of an invade. However, when you think about invade, cheesing, counter jungling, setting traps, you're very much thinking of things like Ivan, Rengar, Shaco, something that will end up surprising you if perhaps you don't exactly anticipate them taking your stuff. Your job is to understand what your goals are and to play around it. Finally, we do have the full clears and the level 6 controlling and scaling junglers. Think your fiddles, Evelyns, Karthuses, they love to farm a full clear, look to get a crab if possible, and if you make a mistake with your gank, if you make a mistake by ganking the wrong lane, they're gonna counter gank you early, get double crab, and then repeat clear again, and all of a sudden you're gonna be level 4 while they are level 6. And that's why for our fourth point, you have to consider your decision making after the initial first clear and how to read the map. Now fortunately, we have a very good example to show you the things you should be considering and what happens when you make the wrong decision. We have your quintessential meta stoner jungler in Talia throwing rocks is her hobby, versus an Evelyn who enjoys doing not safe for work things that I can't talk about in this video but I know most of you would probably enjoy it, except for the death part. An early probing invade that everyone likes to make fun of me for saying but it's a good word. Go have a look, see what's what, leave a ward on the camp you might be afraid they're either gonna do first or second. Evelyn mains enjoy doing full clears, they can also start on raptors, they can also do an inner clear, they have a whole bunch of options. Now while Talia is an omnivore jungler, does scale very well, enjoys getting on the map and being active, you are not looking to FK farm or get to a level 6 power spike. Therefore, based on the fact that the Evelyn is starting on the raptors as we can see on our map due to the ward, Talia is going from the red to the Krugs, what do you think she should do next? Do a full red side clear, invade the blue immediately after Krugs after seeing the Evelyn, or perhaps do a red side into a gank or just simply a full clear? Well, the thing is Evelyn does something a little bit unpredictable. Starts on the raptors expected at this point, but instead of going down to the red into the Krugs to perhaps even counter jungle your blue side, instituting some kind of vertical jungling, she decides to go straight from Raptors up. And if you're using your map keys and your mini map and you're watching things, you would see this occur. That means the fact that Atalia does red Krugs Raptors didn't get the best leash, noticed this from the Evelyn and decided to go invade on the blue and the grub. Is this a good decision? No, it is not. Low health, low mana, no blue buff, no lane prio, and now is going to go deep within the enemy jungle, knowing that she's not going to have any sort of assistance at all. And also, by the way, you're low HP. If you get caught out and miss some spells, you're going to die very quickly as well. This was not the time to go for an invade, and when Evelyn backs out and you're caught out, now the laners are collapsing on you, just detach. By that, I mean just run away and leave. Don't loiter, don't hang around, because now you're being killed by a monkey. Instead, now you've absolutely thrown the early game and all of your options are now very limited. The Talia simply could have said, you know what, I'm gonna do my red side, go and take my blue, and then look to counter jungle and take the Evelyn's red. Maybe even I'll gank bottom lane first to create their prior. Maybe I will gank mid lane also. Upon respawning, you can still impact the game though, just because things went badly doesn't mean it's over. After the first clear, you have to think now, what do I need to do to get back into the game? Well, you have a Lissandra mid lane, so that's pretty free for a gank. At the same time, you notice bottom lane is overstaying and quite low. So what you can do is do your blue buff, wait for the Jin and the support to join back into the bottom lane, and once you've done your blue, sync up with them, get two free kills. Don't waste your time doing the grump and then rotating because you've missed the opportunity and now you're wasting time trying to get desperate kills on the bottom tower. And let me tell you, Evelyn is enjoying this. She's just getting to farm till 6, absolutely relaxed, the Tilly is not getting what she needs to get going. Look at this challenger level Lee Sin that is actually against Canyon. I did this on the gameplay channel so excuse my big bearded face showing up in this video, but what happens is he simply does a full red side, knows that the Graves also did a red side 5 camp, and will be on the top side crab having total lame prior. He doesn't stick around to do Krugs, that's a waste of time. He doesn't try gank top or mid because he's gonna run into the canyon graves. Instead, immediately after red, knows all of this and flexes immediately down to get the bottom crab. This denies Canyon's double scuttle strategy, but because Leeson's going back to base and did his grump after the blue, Canyon knows at 4 minutes it's gonna respawn and counter jungles it anyway. The Leeson knows this is tragic and is very upset, sees a skirmish on the bottom wave and goes and ganks before Canyon who was playing mind games while Leeson was focusing on his win conditions of getting lane impact. 
He reset, he cut off the enemy jungle and managed to get his team ahead. Full gameplay for that is linked below, I explain it much more in depth, but it shows you how you need to factor in what do I want to do for my first clear, what do they do for their first clear, what is the actual reality of the state of the map, and finally, how can you still manage to get your win conditions while playing around all of these considerations. And obviously you need to consider counter jungling and XP denial. I covered this extensively in the challenger level Nidalee video, but just to give you a small example here, you are the Talia again, but this time you are against a Fiddlesticks, another sort of Karthus Evelyn hybrid. Against a ganking jungler, it's a bit more simple because you're Talia, you can gank just as well, you can beat a lot of people 1v1. It's against the farming junglers that you need to think quite heavily. You need to make sure they don't get to AFK farm and be rewarded for doing nothing. There's nothing worse in this life. If you know you're against a fiddle, if you have a deep ward and you know they're starting on the blue side, then you know for example Talia it would be a great idea to start on your blue buff actually. Do the full blue side, do your red buff, look to gank on the top lane as well as on the mid lane, see what's available, and because you know that the fiddle stick started on the blue, will do most likely a full 5-6 to six camp clear, show up on the bottom side, try and get that crab, you can time the fact that all second camps that are taken will spawn around that 4 minute point. If someone does red Krugs, spawn around 4 minutes. If someone does blue grub, spawn around 4 minutes. And if they do red raptors, the same exact thing. Which means while you're trying to do your ganks, control the crab, apply pressure on the map as the enemy is farming, when that grub respawns at 4 minutes, you are right there to steal it off the map the second spawn of the grub, extra experience for you and you deny the farming jungler. This level of counter jungling is absolutely vital to your early game plans, consider it, think about it and put it into your game plans. And also, you know, that's the importance of tracking the enemy jungler the whole time. And I almost cover this in every single gameplay video that I put on the other channel because it's so fundamental to how high elo junglers play the game. Now ganking itself is a pretty simple process, I've done an ultimate ganking guide recently, plus a nice comparison between high elo and low elo junglers and how they actually try to gank. Both of the link below will give you the full rundown on what you need to consider and how you need to think about going around that. An emphasis there on around, right? Because you have to think about vision, pathing, control wards. There's so many things you must think about that those videos really, I cannot do them justice in like two or three minutes. And finally, as you apply all of this to your game, after the first clear, the second clear, you implement the ganking, the one thing that becomes sort of very easily clear to you, I hope at least, is that objectives will be so free and so available at all times. Because the objective control, the thing that actually gives your whole team leads, allows you to scale from the early game into the mid game and have the best position to satisfy your win conditions and actually, you know, come away with some LP, all 13 of them. And by ping pong, I mean you do the dragon, and now because the dragon is done, make sure your camps and lanes are set up so that you can swap after backing and go and do the herald. Once you've done the herald, we can look to use it before 14 minutes. This is vital for your success as a jungler because those plate infusions are not only good for you, they're good for your team. And sometimes your team have no idea which way is left, which way is right, and how to spell their own name. And what's a better way of helping them carry themselves? You just give them gold that gives them more items that allows them to accidentally either tank more or do more damage. Nice! And once you've taken that herald, now you can set up, make sure you're counter jungling, getting deep vision, controlling lanes in preparation for that second dragon. You repeat the process and the second herald is simply used for a strong push to open up the map even more. However, you're saying, well, wait a second, I'm Karthus, I'm Fiddlesticks, I'm a scaling jungler, I have to give up these dragons? Yes, sometimes it's okay to give up two dragons, sometimes it's okay to give up a herald. However, if you are tracking correctly, if you have good vision control, if you are farming properly, when those pesky junglers and enemy team go and take that first dragon, don't allow the enemy to ping pong objectives either. Go ahead, it's safe, they're on the dragon, you take the herald. Now you can use that to open up the map for the second dragon. If your team is just simply too far behind, they're all inting, give up the second dragon too, use a herald for some plates, counter jungle while they do the dragon, infuse yourself with the resources necessary to make sure you can fight and win over that third dragon, which is really something that sets your team up to be able to control the mid game macro phase. And that's when your ADC starts randomly split pushing and dying, that's when everyone does whatever they think is right even though it's wrong, and that's when sort of weird solo queue things happen. Which is why these first 15 minutes in the early game, you need to consider everything in this video, because jungling is about those first 15 before we just become another player on the map. You're preparing your chess pieces to be absolutely juiced, chiseled and carved out of the purest crystal you've ever seen. I know there's some nice wooden chess boards, but have you seen those crystal pieces? But there you have it, hopefully it helps provide a little context, I know it's a huge amount of information in a short period of time, I know I go through it very quickly, but sometimes it's good to have an overview with links to more in-depth topics that can prepare you and you can refer back to over time. 
Thank you very much for watching all these videos and supporting the content. Please do like, share, and comment if you enjoyed it, learned something. Don't forget to join me on Planet Nine, wash your beers to keep them fluffy and fresh, and as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.